Welcome to this series of videos in which we introduce new ways to teach about nature of science and technology in relation to societies and environments. This video, intended for teachers, seeks to define this notion of socio-technical imaginaries and to illustrate how it can be useful to science education. The next videos are intended for students to teach them about socio-technical imaginaries and other related terms through relevant examples and case studies. We will start this video by this image, not to debate the pros and cons of kids spending so much time on screens nowadays, but to ask how is it that holding a cell phone becomes so natural, part of who we are. Why does it feel awkward not to have a cell phone to fidget with? What makes cell phones so normalized? Which visions of the future makes having a cell phone almost feels like a necessity? A necessity that often turns unquestioned. Those questions bring us into our topic around socio-technical imaginaries. What is this term? Why is it important to talk about this issue in the science classroom? This is what the present video hopes to explore. Socio-technical imaginaries are collectively held, institutionally stabilized and publicly performed visions of desirable futures, animated by shared understandings of forms of social life and social order attainable through and supportive of advances in science and technology. It might be important to retain from all of this that socio-technical imaginaries, or SIs for short, are visions of desirable futures, and that such desirable futures are not limited to what each of us individuals desire, but what networks of financiers, corporations, governments, scientists and engineers, amongst others, promote as desirable. Let me illustrate with some examples. Consider self-tracking devices, watches, cell phones, bracelets, that constantly measure our physical activity, sleep patterns, heart rates, etc. What makes those devices so popular is that they feed into a socio-technical imaginary of self-care of being in control of your own health and the convenience and efficiency that comes with that. However, equally important to consider is that they delimit what and how self-care looks like and as a result, the quote-unquote good citizen slowly becomes synonymous with a person who can self-manage and keep track of every single aspect of what's happening in their body. This explains why sometimes we feel the pressure to own a tracking device even if we're aware of surveillance issues. Questions of who can afford self-care becomes equally relevant. Recently, there's, there's a thriving movement called the quantified self that encourages people to self-track their physiological bodies, developing a blind attachment to numbers and what they mean. In summary, Self-care as a socio-technical imaginary makes self-tracking devices appealing. Let us take another example. Fertilizers are a product of science and technology. What makes fertilizers so popular is that they ensure yield increase and plant growth. They are attached to imaginaries of human progress and nature as a resource to satisfy human needs. Fertilizers ensure human time scales matter more than other non-human scales. Science and technology are hence dominated by anthropocentric temporalities. This is a fancy word that boils down to practices in science and engineering that privilege human time scales and their immediate needs over needs of other non-humans and their related life cycles. Here's a third example of a science and technology product, carbonated jinx. 
Here, the sociotechnical imaginary connected to carbonated drinks is loud and clear. In many of the advertisements, we are constantly bombarded with every day. Drinking Coke makes you happy. Consuming high sugar and calorie drinks becomes associated with happiness, with being happy with others. An underlying sociotechnical imaginary advanced through carbonated drinks is one that views the citizen as a consumer, whose happiness depends on consuming carbonated drinks and sharing those consumptive behaviors with others. Hence, while it's definitely worthwhile to discuss the negative nutritional impact of carbonated drinks on people's health and the negative impacts on environment through the generated waste, an equally important discussion relates to the visions of the desirable citizen that carbonated drinks help to support. Sociotechnical imaginaries become an essential part of a network of stakeholders or actants that seem to sing a common tune. So to recapitulate, sociotechnical imaginaries as visions of desirable futures can take many shapes, from consumerism, autonomy individualism, what it means to have self-knowledge, what it means to be a, a, a society that's directed towards human progress, etc. Make sure to check in the description section of this video a further description of sociotechnical imaginaries if you would like to learn more about this topic. As a science teacher, you may still wonder why such a topic is relevant to your students. First, sociotechnical imaginaries enable us to understand science and technology as social practices rather than isolated fields. Sociotechnical imaginaries allow students to identify problematic aspects in the relationships among science, technology, societies, and environments. This brings the focus of science education back to social and ecological matters. This is in reference to so socio-scientific issues education and SCSE education as it pertains to Canada. If you are teaching about design thinking as a science teacher, you may still want to draw students' attention to critical perspectives on technologies. As a result, students may begin by designing technologies that are more socially and environmentally sustainable. Finally, all of the above feed into a renewed focus for science education that wants to prepare critical, responsible, and active citizens who can challenge existing sociotechnical imaginaries and enact alternate imaginaries that enable more ethical living with others and environments. Subsequent videos are intended for students to teach them about sociotechnical imaginaries through specific examples and case studies. Each of the three videos will teach students about sociotechnical imaginary through a different focus. A third focus a first focus is to critically examine technologies and their hidden values and how technologies can narrowly define values and visions. A second focus would be to consider how emotions stick us to particular socio-technical imaginaries. And a third focus uses future thinking to question taken for granted socio-technical imaginaries. In those videos, we invite students to substitute the term socio-technical imaginaries with an easier, perhaps more accessible terms, such as desirable visions or future values. As a teacher, you may decide on yet another substitution that might work for your students.